Hello, we have a lovely Capricorn full moon coming up and the full moon is going to be on July the 3rd, 2023, which is a Monday. It's going to be at 7.38 a.m. Eastern time and it's at 11 degrees, a master number. So it's kind of an 11, 11 um, uh, full moon. And I know everybody loves that master number, but I'm going to talk more about it as we go in. But before I dive into the details of this lovely full moon, I would like to say that um, um, I am Louise Eddington, the Cosmic Owl. Uh, my website is louiseeddington.com. I am the creator of the Venus Retrograde Heroines Journey class, which is coming up and beginning on July the 19th. Uh, the call, Venus Stations Retrograde um, on, Venus, on July the 22nd. And I did a preview call, which is available here on, um, on YouTube. And I'm going to link to that at the end. And I'll also link to it in the show notes. And I hope you'll consider joining me on the class because we've got a ton of people already. And it's going to be amazing. And I promise you that this Venus Retrograde is going to be off the charts. <laughs> I think that's always funny with astrology. But anyway, that's me. Anyway, while you're here, please subscribe to the video. Uh, to the channel below give me a thumbs up um and um leave me a comment i love your comments and most people that comment know that i respond to them at least with a heart all right so let's pull a card for this lovely full moon mm, oh i like this i like this because it's on a three day as well i'm just actually going to kind of show you this is abundance, but this is three of cups. Is that, oh, it's very, oh, there we go. It's kind of, this is emotional fulfillment. And, and that feels very appropriate for a full moon. And I, I do feel that this lunar cycle that began with the Gemini new moon opposing the uh, galactic center and square Neptune um, is, is bringing for many people <laughs> a more of a sense of uh, emotional um, uh, fulfillment and nourishment. And um, that's a bit of a joke, but an in-joke for my Facebook page. But I, I seriously mean it. I, I think people have changed their perspectives and have learned to, or are learning to, um, nurture and nourish their, their needs and um, and their emotional needs and their physical needs and their mind body needs. And I myself, I'm actually taking a, a, a real break uh, the week before this full moon. Um, I will do some writing and things like that, but I'm taking a break from my daily long um, updates. I'm taking a break from some other things in my work because um, I think we all need to do these things to figure out what we need to fill our cup again. And look at these cups, these are overflowing. So the potential on this full moon is to fill your cup till it's overflowing and spilling out to everybody else. So take that on board. Okay, so let's have a look at the astrology first of all, and then, um, and then we'll dive in. Mm, actually, do I want to look at the astrology first? No, I'm going to actually look at the numbers first. So it's a number 11 and, uh, well, it's 11 degrees, as I said. So 11 is, as we know, is a master number. Most people know that by now. It's the one we all go, oh, look, it's 11, 11 on the clock. And it's the first of the master numbers. And it's a high, all master numbers are said to be of high vibration. Um, the 11 is really about illumination, enlightenment, um, inspiration, idealism, the master teacher, it's intuitive and psychic abilities, it's poetry, it's art, it's symbols, <laughs> like the astrological symbols as well, expression, all those kind of things. But, you know, with a master number comes kind of the greater challenge as well. Master numbers are really powerful. And uh, but this is one of tapping into that energy of 
um, creation and channeling and poetry and, and sensitivity and creativity and yes, that nourishing your needs kind of thing. It's a, it's a, it's a number that has um, a great vulnerability as well though, because if you think about it and even to go back to the card, you know, when you're emotionally full, you're also more emotionally vulnerable. And vulnerability is really where it's at these days, if you haven't noticed. But that doesn't mean, um, but vulnerability does also mean that you kind of have to make sure your cup stays filled so that being vulnerable doesn't empty your cup out. So it can be a tendency with an 11 to... Um, to be ponderous rather than doing. Um, and it can be, um, you know, a little bit um, uh, off balance at times. So it's a really, a, a need to really stay centered and balanced at all times uh, because there can be a tendency for that emotional swing, all right, with the number 11. So it's a big full moon. A full moon is always heightened energy as we know. And, and, you know, that 11 is going to be off the charts, water energy, really, even though it's a Capricorn full moon, it's opposing the sun in Cancer. And uh, the Cancer is the moon's home sign. So yes, we are filled with emotion on this full moon. And we're also got a three day, of course. And so three is another, uh, another lovely number, and I picked the three card as well. So we can look at that as well. And three is an optimistic and fun um, number. So that's bringing some optimism, some joy in, some inspiration and creativity. You know, for me personally, I can picture it. I get back to work on that Monday morning on the full moon. And after being rested and recuperated and filling my cup up, I feel that I am going to be full of joy and optimism and ready to create and move towards um, running my Venus class. And, um, and so it's also a number of creativity, inspiration, and, and to, to tap into that inspiration and creativity. We sometimes need that rest, reset, and things like that. Okay, so let's look at the astrology. Here we go. Here is the moon. You can see it's July the 3rd, as I said, 2023. It's actually in a seven month and the seven year. And, and we're in this seven year of um, things collapsing to be rebuilt. But seven is a very spiritual number. So it's kind of a bit of a, a spiritual collapse and a spiritual rebirth. And the astrology shows that in other ways. I won't go into detail, but but it does. And so this full moon is almost a pure kind of full moon. It doesn't have very um, any major um, squares to it. It doesn't have any major uh, sextiles or trines. Um, you can see it's sitting here alone um, like this. It's fairly close to Centaur Folus, but, but I, I kind of think that's... Um, uh, just adding a little flavor to it, but I am going to talk about it. So, and I am going to add what flavor it's talking is going to add to it because I know not many of us use the, the centaurs. So the moon is at 11 degrees at Capricorn and opposing the sun at 11 Cancer, the, the moon's home sign. And Juno is right here on the full moon as well. And Juno, Juno is our sacred contracts with each other. And that's our sacred relationships. Um, it's the Heros Gamos, the divine marriage of all opposites and the, and the divine feminine and the divine masculine. So we have that um, um, next to the uh, sun on the full moon. And we also have Mercury, um, the um, energy of the non-binary, the boundary crosser, uh, the transfigurator, the, uh, um, he, he's related to all the trans words. And I have to say, it really changed my perspective since um, astrologer Wade Caves pointed that out. I was like, mind blown. 
that was close to the Gemini new moon. Uh, and it it really did kind of blow my mind that uh, the trans words are all Mercury because they are. <laughs> Mercury is this boundary crosser and is very non-binary. He has, um, uh, they have, <laughs> I prefer to call Mercury they, they have both energies within them. So um, that's conjunct the sun. And uh, the the moon and the sun are actually, sorry, Mercury and the sun, oh goodness me, are actually very close to a Kazemi on this point. I actually forgot to look when they will be conjunct, so let me have a look. So I'm going to talk about that in a minute as well. Um, but when Mercury and Juno, actually, to be honest, are this close to the sun, they are under the beams. Their energy is somewhat burnt out, um, combust even. And But what is combust? Um, combustion is about burning things off so that we create something new. It's a process combustion. I always feel that when planets are combust, and in traditional astrology, uh, they are said to be weak, but I actually kind of feel like um, uh, they are actually being reborn. Um, there's old things being burned off so that they are reborn. So they may be kind of uh, uh, weak in the moment if they're combust, although I'm not convinced, to be quite honest. But they are being strengthened, in my opinion, by the power of the sun which is the core of our solar system so the actual mercury kazemi is on saturday july the first so it's two days before so mercury is moving away from the sun um and um is has kind of been right on the in the throne of royalty which uh you know the core of our universe um as we move forward to this and um, yeah, I'm not going to mention anything else at this point. OK, so these two are combust. So we've got this energy of sacred contracts and Mercury, which is also about contracts. In a way, Mercury, um, with his boundary crosser, messenger of the gods kind of energy, is about creating new contracts between the gods and humans. OK, so you know, there's a real energy of creating new contracts on this full moon, which incidentally, well, most of you will realize is the day before the USA's birthday, July the 4th. So I think this is going to have a big impact on the USA, but I'm not going to go off into, into that realm right now. I might look at that um, separately later. So anyway, the moon in Capricorn, the moon in Capricorn is about creating these, um, this strong wisdom, bringing the mother and the uh, father energy into elderhood. This has a real energy, the Capricorn, I mean, we always have a Capricorn full moon every year, but this has an energy of balancing and creating new contracts. The Cancer Capricorn axis is the axis of birth to death. It's family to elderhood. It's it's all of those things. Um, you know, Capricorn is the wisdom of the elder. It's maturity uh, and so on and so forth. And Cancer is the mother, the baby. It's mothering. Capricorn is kind of more fathering, which either person can do in a family. So this energy applies to um, to everybody. And so this is really kind of creating a new kind of contract about our human family, in my opinion, about how we nurture and support our own security and how we bring our emotional wisdom into that energy of um, uh, maturity and elderhood. And when I say elderhood, I'm talking archetypally. I'm not talking about age. I'm talking about in all of us because we all gain wisdom and some do it younger than others. And um, and it's in all of us. We're all gaining wisdom from the moment of birth. We're all on this axis, this polarity. 
So I've talked about um, Juno and Mercury bringing this contract energy in. And it feels, and, and a lot of things have been pointing to this, and I'm not going to go over all of them again, but it really feels to me as I track the energies going forward and the cycles that we are going through, it's really becoming apparent to me that we are starting to really examine our contracts with each other as human beings, as the human family, and also with um, the world as a whole, the earth, the all beings on it. Um, because astrology, after all, does affect everything. <laughs> it doesn't just affect human beings. We are just the ones that interpret it. And so there's a real kind of messenger asp um, um, aspect to this uh, full moon. And it's that message of um, spiritual growth, spiritual enlightenment. Another way of looking at this polarity is about growth from birth to death, to old age. Hopefully we're going to grow. We're going to mature. We are going to learn our basic um, emotional needs, which is cancer, our basis of security um, and what that is for us. And then we are going to take it into this wisdom of elderhood and take it out into the world more. Now, I did say I would mention Pholus. Now, Pholus takes the lid off things. He's a little bit like Pandora's box in that way. And he's been taking the lid off our relationship with structures, with um, authority, and asking us to step more into our own authority. That doesn't mean controlling others. That just means stepping into your skeleton, your backbone, standing strong, standing very rooted in your own authority. Um, there's an element of this as well about owning your expertise, owning your wisdom, owning what you know. Um, you know, very few, very, uh, our society in many ways has not encouraged us to do that. Um, I remember when I started on this track of personal development and things that many, many years ago, somebody said, you're the expert. And, I, oh. <laughs> and everybody um, has that kind of re reaction if they've not been doing the work already. This is kind of knowing that you have wisdom in a lot of areas and you have to own it. Doesn't mean it has to be your, your work. But it just means you have to own your embody your wisdom, not necessarily force it onto other people either. But yes, this is really, um, you know, kind of lifting the lid off our blocks, our limiting beliefs. There's a lot of um, that energy at the moment. If you notice Saturn and Pholus on the way to this full moon, Saturn, the ruler of this um, full moon, uh, the ruler of Capricorn, is in a sextile at seven degrees. We're in a seven year, and this is a seven month. <laughs> and seven is a Saturn number. It's a quarter of a Saturn cycle. Is it in an aspect to Pholus? There's a big energy at the moment around our limiting beliefs, where you think you can't, where you think you won't, where you think you always. Um, you know, and these beliefs are instilled in us by um, our or by words, things we've read in um, in our upbringing, things that have been said to us, things that society has said to us. Um, it's the expectations of society. And, um, and you know, it, I strongly advise you on this full moon to let the luminaries, the moon and the sun, that bright light shine down on uh, where you have limiting beliefs that's, that hold you back from really kind of standing in your authority and your wisdom. Um, there's a simple practice of writing the limiting beliefs down on one side of a piece of paper when they come up. When you find yourself believing that you can't or having fear that you're not enough, all those kind of things. And then sitting and examining them and going, are these true? <laughs> well, probably not, actually. So let's rewrite them. Um, 
um, in uh, the positive. So into the yes, we cans. So it's kind of that energy of turning your can'ts into cans. So Folus is going to be kind of lifting the lid off <laughs> some of your limiting beliefs and some of your blocks to, to achieving the things that you want to do in the world, to building the, the structures that you want to do in uh, to build in the world, which is very Capricornian as well. So let me see what else we can say about this chart. And, and I, I realize I'm sharing for longer than I usually do, but that's OK. I'm going to share because I'm pointing at things. I do want to mention one thing here because it's pretty significant. Uh, Venus and Jupiter. Uh, Venus and Mars, sorry, not Jupiter. Um, are pretty much as close as they're going to get before Venus stations retrograde on July the 22nd, because Venus is going to slow down and um, and start and uh, ready for her retrograde. OK, and Mars is going to keep going forward and, and they won't meet until next year. And now this is the divine um, masculine and the divine feminine. And they are touching base on this full moon almost. Venus is kind of saying, OK, I, I see where we're going to connect, but I'm not quite ready yet. I'm going to go back and I'm going to do my work in this retrograde in Leo. So, um, you know, they're still going to be seen together um, in the evening sky Um at this time, but of course, the, the full moon will make visibility um, more difficult because of, it's going to be so bright. But this is also conjunct Pallas Athena. So we've got this big energy here, which um, particularly Mars and Pallas Athena are around the degree that Venus will station retrograde at, which is 28 degrees Leo. And Pallas Athena, the wise owl, um, the problem solver, the creative intelligence asteroid, uh, the goddess of wise justice is helping us to find strategies to move forward through this very transformational time. So any enlightenment and any awarenesses that we get on this full moon will be uh, kind of she she is giving us the ability to strategize how we are going to move forward with these sacred contracts between all opposites as represented by the divine masculine and the divine feminine coming together in that yin yang kind of shape. What else to mention before we go on to the symbols? Well, Ceres, one of my favorite um, energies, as you probably know, I've done, I'm going to write a book on Ceres. I might even start it on my week off before the full moon, um, is at three degrees on this uh, three day. And so the number three gives that optimism and things. And she's in a Venus ruled sign. So this is kind of, again, about nourishing and coming together with your relationships. So, so we've got that energy going on as well. And really, it's it's quite a straightforward full moon. You know, there's there's um, what else to say? Not much, I don't think. No, I don't think any other planets will have turned retrograde by then. Not major pad retrogrades. Um, oh, except Neptune. Huh? Neptune. Neptune has turned retrograde. Neptune turns retrograde. Neptune is foggy. So <laughs> I always find it funny when I miss Neptune. <laughs> Neptune um, in Pisces stationed retrograde just on June the 30th. So just before this full moon and is in this year long square to the galactic center. And that's also bringing us these messages of spiritual growth and spiritual enlightenment from the galactic center where it was just found that the galactic center is emitting these streams of gases they've actually been witnessed by um, astronomers um, and you know the galactic center um, is the center of our milky way and it's said to emit new knowledge so there's uh, you know that's there's a continuation of that this full moon is the fulfillment of the Gemini new moon that was opposing that galactic center. So you are taking in, receiving, 
being given new information until this full moon as well and and continually because neptune is but neptune is going to go back and move a little bit off the galactic center but really it's um it's a, a two-year square really so we are having a big invitation to this spiritual um um uplift spiritual um in a um it's a time of enlightenment when new information's coming through from the galactic center and each phase of it with the new and full moons and the other cycles is helping us to move towards this more enlightened time. Okay. All right. So I'm going to stop the share and I'm going to again ask you to subscribe to my channel. Don't forget. I also have t-shirts and things just for fun, but if you like them, why not? You can find those below too. Um, I am going to look at the symbols though. So let's look at the um, Sabian symbol. Oh, I do have that. This one I find really interesting. Um, some of the Sabian symbols I think are a little bit um old paradigm but um i i i like this one i i find the wording of some of the sabian symbols not not very um uh, great for our current um state of evolution anyway a student of nature lecturing all right so um this is saying about passing on the life lessons that you have earned um, and uh, learned, sorry. And that's coming from jamesburgess.com. He, he interpreted the symbols. I kind of like his interpretations. So I'm going to read from his page. So um, he said, we gain knowledge of the meaning of life as much by overcoming physical limitation as through inner reflection on spiritual matters. And and I and from nature, I would say actually as well by getting out in nature. You know, I I kind of consider nature my religion really because the natural world is is what I um I love. But anyway, scientific materialism has been the driving force of modernity, and its push to gain knowledge and dominance of all life has been um, both wonderful and terrible. We've created the Big Bang Theory and walked on the moon, yet also we have built nuclear and biological weapons. The collective mind of human humanity um, is the consciousness of the planet, and its purpose is to become more and more conscious of what is the structure and dynamic of life on Earth. This is achieved as we come up against new challenges and find a way to export exploit nation, natural resources to meet the challenge. I mean, I particularly love this, <laughs> you know, uh, this one, because, you know, I was talking about the energy of uh, cancer, cancer being our basis of security could is, is our inner home. And you could also see it as our home here on earth. And then Capricorn is about the structures we've created and are creating. So anyway, that's one of my big kind of <laughs> uh, like, let's learn how to live with nature rather than um, against nature and dominating it. So kind of this is how this is what this symbol speaks to me of. And the astrology actually has been telling me that, too. All right. So let's look at um, John Sandbatch's Chandra symbol. It's one of it's a fun one. And um, he says it's a beautiful, erotic, fat woman eating chocolates. This is, I, I find it interesting that this is Capricorn because it feels quite Cancerian to me, but they're on this axis as well. So um, <laughs> I don't think he literally means sit and eat chocolates. So let's listen to his interpretation. Uh, John Sandbach says, I am reminded of William Blake's proverb, the road of excess leads to the palace of wisdom. 
To indulge oneself is to look for fulfillment and indulgement. indulgence will only continue if fulfillment is not found. And so what is needed is a pure, deeper indulgence that finally transcends addiction. Often what is forbidden is embraced and it can then be fully let go of. Accepting and um, accepting and who it, one it, of one who one is, together with, with one's weaknesses and vulnerabilities, can be what finally allows one to shed them. Hmm, I th I like that one actually because you know um, that talks to me about filling your emotional and spiritual cup rather than looking outside for fulfillment. And it's about spiritual fulfillment le leading to that Capricorn wisdom. So that's my interpretation of it. I think I'm I'm just going to leave the symbols at that. I'm liking John Sambach's um, interpretations. If you want to find his symbols, his website is johnsandbach.net. So J-O-H-N-S-A-N-D-B-A-C-H dot net. And he actually channeled um, some other symbols. He channeled the Omega symbols as well um, and Pleiadian symbols, which are kind of a, a re-channeling um, of the Sabian symbols. So this particular one, if you remember, it was a student of nature uh, lecturing. He's reformed it as a botanist explaining the structure of flowers. Hmm. So similar, but um, but anyway, and he's also got Azoth symbols. So a man sensitized to, or a human, sensitized to the energies that each particular star emanates. So all in all, I am kind of saying this is really about tapping into body wisdom, getting in nature, really kind of connecting and and feeling your relationship with the structures of of earth as a whole and what brings you your true emotional fulfillment and basis of security and learn from that um, to the point of gaining wisdom so it's a lovely full moon spiritual enlightenment here you come um, lean in and um, and work it so <laughs> well open yourself up to it I should say really so for now I'm Louise Eddington the Cosmic Owl of Cosmic Owl Astrology and I will catch you on the next video